Hi traders and welcome to another edition of Trading Tips brought to you by HowToDoubleYourPortfolio.com. Again, check out the website. We'll talk about it more later. HowToDoubleYourPortfolio.com. On today's Trading Tips, we're going to talk about another fun technical trading tool that I use called the Bollinger Bands. Yes, this is chart attack number two, Bollinger Bands. Now, the Bollinger Bands are very, very interesting and they're actually not as common as, as you might think. I, I know some of you hopefully have heard of them. If you don't use them, they're a real nice tool to overlay onto your charts just to see if a stock is overbought or oversold. It also helps you to understand just how volatile a stock is. And I'm going to get to those specifics here in just a second. So what is a Bollinger Band anyway? Well, think about it like this. Typically, a Bollinger Band is a moving average. Generally, it's a 20 period, or if you're using a daily chart, a 20 day moving average, surrounded by two lines above and below it. Now those two lines that are above and below, we'll take a look at those again in just a second here, those represent a two stair deviation move in the stock per day. Now for you math geeks out there, you might know what a stair deviation is, for, but for those of you who don't, a standard deviation basically tells us the probability, statistically, of a stock moving one way or the other. With the Bollinger Bands and their typical setup, it usually is about a 95% chance that the stock is going to stay between those two lines or that sort of envelope, okay? So it gives us a good typical range for the stock and helps us identify abnormal moves, okay? Again, if that envelope is exceeded, so let's assume a stock has a real big day, it rallies up five or 6% and it's outside of its upper Bollinger Band, you might say, gosh, this might not be a good time, A, to buy the stock, and B, maybe it's a good time to short it at least quickly and look for that turnaround, okay? The thing about Bollinger Bands is they can be used for you to trigger your trades. In other words, you can look for stocks that eclipse their Bollinger Bands and trigger your new trades, or you could simply use them as a way to monitor normal movements or abnormal movements in a stock. And again, as we go through this session, you're going to be able to identify those situations. Here's a band visual for you. And if you see this sort of grayed area, this is what the Bollinger Band looks like. In this setup, and again, this is TC2000, it's a free website, um, I chose to, to color the bands or shade the bands, you know, a, a shade of gray, obviously, so I can see visually where the stock is in relation to it. These other two lines you see here are the 20 and 50 day moving averages. I actually chose to omit the center average of the Bollinger Band, which in this case, like I said, is the 20 day average. That's the typical setup, okay? So let's talk about how we use this. Now you can see it, what it looks like on a chart. Here's how you use it. Well, first of all, I find Bollinger Bands work most effectively when you're looking at a daily chart. In other words, if you're a swing trader, you hold stocks for maybe one to three or four days, Bollinger Bands are great as trading tools, they're great to signal new trades, and I find the Bollinger Band is extremely effective in that short time frame. What I'll generally look for are clear violations of that Bollinger Band. So if we go back to our sort of IBM situation right here, this area up here, um, back on, it looks like November 19th or so, or the 20th, you could see that it poked through, it violated that upper Bollinger Band. If you look back here in October on the 17th, well, look at this, it gapped down, violated the lower Bollinger Band, and sure enough, retraced all the way back up through it. And you could see how the stock sort of oscillated through its normal range. What I love to do is I love to use the Bollinger Band in conjunction with moving averages, okay? In our last session, we talked about moving averages, and if you understand moving averages and then layer the Bollinger Bands on top of it, it only makes for a more powerful trading tool, okay? Now again, remember, when a stock is above its 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average is above the 200, then you're in that bullish trend, okay? So then... You're, you might have more of a propensity, <laughs> get that word out, to look for those big downside violations. Because if the stock remains above those moving averages, but it sells off you know, in the short term through its Bollinger Band, that might be your target, your timing, your, your chance to enter. And remember, the bigger the violation is of the 2050 or 200 day moving average, the more severe the movement. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about some nuances of Bollinger Bands. First of all, the wider the band, and, and we'll look at this here in just a second, the wider that band is, that is a period of high volatility for the stock. The narrower it is, in other words, the thinner that 
sort of gray shaded area is or the closer those lines are together on your chart, that typically indicates a period of low volatility for the stock. The key is open up your charts and look at least a year back. Find sort of the normal uh, width of the Bollinger Band. And then when you see a Bollinger Band increase or decrease, you know, you sort of know if the stock is getting more volatile versus its average, or if it's just, uh, you know, a sort of a one time fluke, or if it's not being volatile at all. But you need to open up that time frame to be able to notice these subtle nuances. Again, the key here is we want to look for clear violations of the stock through its Bollinger Band. And we also want to take into account volume. Is there big volume on that sell off? That could be, uh, you know, a, a, maybe some panic setting in. Or if a stock rallies and pierces through its upper Bollinger Band, if there's big volume there, you know, maybe there's a news story out and we need to check the news because if it's something catastrophic or something, you know, maybe really, really good, well, if it's catastrophic, we don't want to, you know, buy the stock because it's probably going to go lower. And if it's really good news like a takeover, we're probably not going to be shooting the stock because it could keep going higher. Okay, does that make sense? Let's take a look now at some Bollinger Band examples. Now, remember, if you remember this from last week, we used the stock crossing, you know, through the 20 moving average for short-term trades, okay? But if you look, those can be used in conjunction with the Bollinger Band. So you can keep using your, your triggers to get into the stock. For instance, down here, here's a, a, a piercing of the lower Bollinger Band in the rally. Up in this area, you can see we pierced through the top of the Bollinger Band and it moved lower. And look at that, the stock, you know, obviously you would stay in the trade, stay in the trade until it crossed back up that 20. Same thing here, look at this rally, pierced up through the Bollinger Band and then sold right off. So again, what we're looking for folks, if you're not noticing the, the pattern, is we see the sell off, the pierce, we would buy at this point, look for the rally back up and then you could use your moving averages if you wanted to get out or wait till the stock returns back to the upper part of its Bollinger Band and that would be your exit, okay? Um, over here, sort of the same thing. You know, in this case, again, you're just sort of in a bullish trend. It never really, stock never really got through its lower Bollinger Band. So if you're, if you're in the stock in this area, which you would be just if you were using moving average, you really didn't have any extra buy points, and that's okay because the point of it here is use it in conjunction with your moving average. Let's take a look at another chart. Here's a company that actually reported earnings recently, and if you look to the right of your screen, you'll see this huge volume spike, and look at the stock. It, it not only pierced its Bollinger Band, but it's way below it. At this point, when you see this huge volume spike, which is completely abnormal, and you see a stock that's way outside of its Bollinger Band, that is a cue for you to read the news and check out what's going on with the stock. Here's another example back here. This was in September. All right, the stock pierced to the upper part of its Bollinger Band. You can see it right here. Was there earnings? Was there news? Whenever you see an abnormality like that, coupled with very high volume, that should be an indicator or a reminder for you to go check the news, check the earnings, see what's going on. Okay, here's some regular buy points. You know, there's a pierce below the lower Bollinger Band. Again, even though you may have bought here, you would have had to weather a little bit of a storm, but the stock did recover and you would have made money. In this case, this is where you sort of have to be aware of where, of where you are in the grand scheme of things. Watch this trade. So here's the stock, you know, uh, in looks like late June. You had the lower pierce, which would be your buy point. You're in the trade, you're in the trade, you're in the trade. Now, this should be used as an exit if you're already in. But one might ask, all right, so let's just say that I'm not in the trade and then I see this pattern right here. I see the stock, you know, pierce through its upper Bollinger Band. Am I gonna go short the stock? Well, let's remember, first of all, the stock just broke up above its 200 day moving average. It's above its 20, it's above its 50, and it's obviously seeing some momentum. You could go short here, but the odds are sort of stacked against you because the stock was above its moving averages and was in a very, very bullish trend. Sideways trends or sometimes, you know, clear channels are a little bit easier to navigate. And we actually used this chart from the last video as well. Like I said, bulger bands can be used in conjunction with moving averages. Look at this. Here's a buy signal. Not only did you get a buy signal with the Bollinger Band, but you could see it's bouncing off its 50-day moving average. This is back in August of 2012. We're looking at IBM now. All right, and then obviously you would sell using your moving average, not the Bollinger Band. Again, the Bollinger Band here, if you sort of look throughout the chart, it's a good cue 
to layer on to your already good, hopefully good trading plan, okay? Bollinger Bands are fantastic at letting you know the relative overbought or oversold condition of a stock, but they are by no means a guarantee that a stock is going to reverse course. I can tell you though, you know, um, it is very rare to see a stock just continue to trade straight up above or below its Bollinger Band for a continued period of time. If it pierces that band, there's a good chance that it's going to, to reverse course in the near future. And sometimes those reversals are very short-lived. But look down here in April. I don't have an arrow here, but look at this. There was the gap lower, pierced the lower Bollinger Band, and look at this straight shot up recovery, and there would have been your exit. So again, a very, very powerful tool, one you certainly should use if you're a technical trader at all. And if you're using moving averages, the Bollinger Band is an excellent way to complement that trading. Remember, they're not the end-all, be-all, and you got to verify them with your thesis. In other words, if your thesis is bullish and you've got a bearish entry on your Bollinger Band, well... Think about how bullish your thesis is. Do you really want to get short of stock? Maybe not. Maybe you should just stick to using the Bollinger Bands for your bullish trades if you are very bullish or using them for your bearish entries if you're bearish. Okay. Watch volume moving averages. Use them with each other. And don't forget to find the normal bandwidth of a stock. It's really important. It's going to help you ensure and you that you understand what the normal sort of variation or volatility of a stock is in that way, you'll be able to more appropriately and accurately determine the overbought or oversold conditions. Guys, that was another edition of Trading Tips. And again, I really want you to check out howtodoubleyourportfolio.com. Fantastic website. They've got a great free ebook. They will send you right away just for going to the website. So check them out now, howtodoubleyourportfolio.com. I'm Jared Levy. We'll see you here soon.